So this class, it's, is it hybrid? Or how you having your classes one day in class and the other Moodle? Or is it both days in class? You get to decide which days are in class and which days are Moodle, or uh, uh, Zoom. That's how exciting this is. <laughs> Uh, I'll see you next semester. See, I know, right? <laughs> I'll, I'm, I'm local, so I'll try to make it in once a week, twice a week. Well, look, I, w I would love it if y'all could be here every day. Uh, uh, I think uh, people learn more that way. Yeah. You know, when you're at home and you're watching on Zoom, there's a tendency to all of a sudden, oh, the kid comes in and wants his shoes tied, or, oh my God, I'm burning the fish. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's, now here's, here is the weakness. We have no workable speaker and microphone so I have to tune into Zoom uh, by phone. And I've had so many Zoom meetings, I've already got the number memorized to call Zoom. <laughs> well, that doesn't sound good at all. not sound like it's going to be a great connection. running over time. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Judith, Judith Sam? Judith Sam. Yes, sir. All right, so we're fill, filling in the middle of the chart there. All right, my participant ID. Okay. Now, I'm hoping that y'all are going to be able to hear me well. I've been making recordings of my uh, classes, and I noticed that I came out very muffled uh, on the previous ones because of the excitement of wearing a mask. I'm hoping we'll have our shield soon. And then I'll be muffled because there's a shield and not because there's a mask. Why are they going to put shields in? Um, yes, we are. Uh, okay, so here is the syllabus. Uh, and uh, the syllabus will be 
posted to Moodle. If I haven't already, I am not 100% sure if I've done that or not. Uh, my name is Harry uh, Whiting. Uh, I am a professor of industrial engineering here. Uh, but I have been managing projects since I was 16 years old. So I have a lot of experience in this area, uh, including some, I should say, uh, because the projects I was managing at 16 were not that impressive, including some multi-million dollar projects that I managed for uh, Texas A&M University system. Uh, my email, hwhiting at navajotech.edu. Uh, my office phone number, this is on the new phone system, 505-387-7421. My office is in Tech 323 which is actually the room right behind you. Thus making it super simple for me to make it to class every day. Uh, and our class location, you obviously already know, you're in Tech 325. We're going to be meeting on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3.30 to 4.50 p.m. Um, our required materials, and you know what, I can go ahead. And print y'all to syllabi so that you don't have to write everything down. I see you have the sixth edition up there. They gave me the seventh edition. I despair. Um, these guys never tell me when they change the edition, uh, when they decide to buy the new, uh, uh, a different edition than the one we have. Okay, I will get the seventh edition so that we'll all be on the same okay. uh, page. I don't want to wait in that line again. <laughs> no one blames you for that sensible feeling. Um, Okay, so uh, you don't actually have to have a laptop, but you will need to have a computer. Uh, having a jump drive is very helpful. Uh, and uh, uh, access to Excel. You can always come and use the computers in this lab, which have the whole Microsoft suite, although I assume you all have that in the business uh, labs also. Course description. Topics covered include ethic, ethics, management, organization, planning, and controlling of projects, and provides practical knowledge on managing project scope, schedule, and resources. Project life cycle, work breakdown structure, Gantt charts, network diagrams, scheduling techniques, and resource allocation decisions. Well, that's an incomplete sentence, no matter how you look at it. <laughs> but we will be discussing uh, all these uh, various aspects. Course objectives. Man. How come I have so many course objectives? Um, uh, students will be given further information about ethical principles, 
uh, because we teach this class in engineering, uh, this is one of the three courses that have ethics content. Uh, students will understand management methods and principles. Students will understand how to organize and manage projects. Students will be able to use the project management tools such as work breakdown structure, Gantt charts, and network diagrams. Students will understand the concepts of using critical path method, PERT, and other scheduling techni techniques. Students will be introduced to risk management and mitigation. Students will understand project life cycle design and planning. Students will improve knowledge of managing project culture. Students will be introduced to resource allocation. So you can see there's a lot of introductions to this class. Course outcomes. Students will be able to evaluate the ethical dimensions of a problem in the discipline. Students will evaluate conflicting slash competing social values in order to make informed decisions about a, a well, it says an engineering solution, but let's just say a solution. Students will evaluate and analyze the economics of a, uh, an engineering problem solution. Students will identify the environmental and social issues involving uh, in an engineering solution and incorporates that sensitivity into the design process. Students will evaluate alternative engineering solutions or scenarios taking into consideration current issues. Okay, the measurements will be by problems presented in homework, quizzes, tests, and projects. Uh, okay, now you notice that in our outcomes, engineering comes up a lot. The thing is, project management, whether you're an engineer managing an engineering project, or you're a business person managing a business project, all of these things are applicable either way. Now, an embarrassing admission. You'll notice that I say the, the date that week one starts is uh, August the 10th. Well, that's true, but we're here on August the 11th. Uh, so uh, it may be a little uh, uh, tiny bit confusing. Uh, this is just the date the week begins for the school. Oh, oh bloody hell. I am not going to read you the calendar. If you want, uh, get the syllabi out of the printer over your shoulder there. Um, uh, Judith. Uh, there should be two copies and uh, uh, give one to uh, me, Cheryl. Did it not all come out? No. But first is one page. First oh, page. it wants you to put it back in and run it through again. Uh, uh, the door, the little door that's open in back on the other side of the printer. There's no more paper. Well, that could be another reason. I thought it sounded like it hadn't run everything through. Okay, anyway, 
I don't want to go through and read you the calendar. I'm embarrassed to say I have not checked to make sure after they um, uh, uh, after they change the calendar around if uh, 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 if this is still accurate. Okay, I will post an updated copy of the syllabus on the website. All right, so the grading plan. Homework is 20%. Uh, yes, ma'am? The homework, like when you have an assignment to homework number one, what, what is that? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> I will uh, put down the homework for you um, uh, uh, later in the class. Okay. Um, all right, so homework 20%, attendance 5%, participation 5%. Uh, Y'all are already participating more than I'm used to my students. Uh, participating. Apparently business students are much friendlier. <laughs> Weekly quizzes 20%, the midterm 20%, final 20%, the project 10%, and the total will be obviously 100%. And at the end of the semester, you can turn in a portfolio of your work. Uh, in other words, all the homework you did, all the quizzes, uh, the tests, uh, your project report, etc., cetera, um, for up to an extra five points on your grade. You know, so if you're at a high C hovering on a B, or a high B ho hovering on the verge of an A, this could be something very good for you. Uh, and the usual A, B, C, D, F grading scale and numbers. All right, so homework will be assigned weekly and graded on a scale of 1 to 10. Right? So if you get a 9 on your homework, that means you got essentially a 90. The top 10 scoring homework assignments, as turned in by the student, will be used in calculating the final grade. Okay, so if you get one or two bad homework grades, not a big deal. Homework is due one week after assignment for full credit, may still be turned in the next week for 75% credit, and no credit thereafter. Homework will always be computer printouts, except if a handout is given as an assignment. Weekly quizzes will be given at the beginning of the second class period of the week and graded on a scale of 1 to 10 also. Okay, so those will be over material that we've been going over in class before. Uh, the top 10 quiz grades will be used in calculating final grades. Students who miss quizzes or tests will not be allowed to make up unless a legitimate written excuse is provided. And midterm and final grades will be curved according to raising the highest objective grade in class to a 100 with all other student grades raised by the same number of points only if there are six or more students in the class. Right now we have five students. So if you want curving, you better get out there and dig up another student. Okay. Uh, attendance will be graded based on the student's arrival on time. Participate, par plug, plug. participation is predicated on a student's questions or answers given during the class period. Students with three unexcused absences will be dropped. 
projects must be completed to pass the class. Those not finishing and presenting class projects will be given an incomplete. Okay, now, you may be saying, oh dear, what is this project going to be? I want you to be thinking of a project that would be of benefit to the Navajo Nation or some portion thereof. Okay, so we've had projects that were uh, uh, that were plans to build old folks' homes, veterans' homes, uh, how to improve agriculture. Uh, uh, and I'll give you a whole description, uh, uh, project description, the next uh, class period, uh, so that as we go through doing homeworks and other things, you can apply the knowledge you're learning to your project. policies. Uh, please turn off cell phones during lectures. Please be courteous to others around you and treat each other with professionalism. Feel free to work together to help others with their questions on homework. Quizzes and tests will be done without help or input from others. Students are expected to spend two hours studying course materials for every hour in class. Now that's pretty standard, uh, right? And it kind of depends on the class. I have had classes myself where I was spending five and six hours for every hour in class, and I've also had classes where I barely spent any time outside class. This, this one is going to be more in the two hours for every hour in class, I imagine. Attendance policy. Students are expected to, att to regularly attend all classes for which they are registered. A percentage of the student's grade will be based on class attendance and participation. Absence from class, regardless of the reason, does not relieve the student of his or her responsibility to complete all coursework by the required deadlines. Furthermore, it is the student's responsibility to obtain notes, handouts, or any other information covered when absent from class and to arrange to make up any in-class assignments or tests if permitted by the instructor. Incomplete or missing assignments will necessarily affect the student's grades. Students, uh, instructors will report excessive and or unexplained absences to the counseling department for investigation and potential intervention. Uh, instructors may drop students from the class after three absences unless prior arrangements are made with the instructor to make up work and the instructor deems an excuse acceptable. Uh, okay, so one of our students is absent today because she's uh, taking her son to the doctor. Okay, so if she brings me a doctor's note, then that's an excused absence. Uh, if she comes back with a tequila bottle and collapses on the floor, not so much. All right, I don't actually expect that to happen. <laughs> Uh, study time outside of class, uh, we already had that part uh, earlier, but again, uh, you're expected to spend two hours outside of class studying the course materials for every hour in class. Academic integrity. Integrity, honesty, is expected of every student in all academic work 
and every scientist, engineer, or business person working professionally. The guiding principle of academic integrity is that a student submitted work must be the student's own. Students who engage in academic dishonesty diminish their education and bring discredit to the college community. Avoid situations likely to compromise academic integrity, such as cheating, facilitating academic dishonesty, and plagiarism. Modifying academic work to obtain additional credit in the same class unless approved in advance by the instructor or failure to observe rules of academic integrity established by the instructor may result in the student being dropped from the class. Oh, bloody hell. That is a long sentence. I think it's, it is almost one sentence. Oh my God. Uh, oh, okay, well, here, can we scroll up a bit? No, we can't. Uh, delay, delay, not delay, Denae philosophy of education. The Denae philosophy of education, or DPE, is incorporated into every class for students to become aware of and to understand the significance of the four Denae philosophical elements, including its affiliation with the four directions, four sacred mountains, the four set of sets of thought processes, and so forth. Nisahakis, Nahata, Ina, and Sinhasan, which are essential and relevant to self-identity, respect, and wisdom to achieve career goals successfully. I have to tell you, I feel silly lecturing Navajos on the Navajo <laughs> philosophy of education. You're doing fine. You're doing pretty good. Well, I've had uh, eight years to learn how to say those four words. You did pretty good on those four words. Uh, Students with disabilities. The Navajo Technical University and the Engineering, Math, and Technology Department are committed to serving all enrolled students in a non-discriminatory and accommodating manner. Any student who feels he or she may need an accommodation based on the impact of disability or need special accommodations should inform should inform NTU in accordance with the procedures of the subsection entitled Students with Disabilities under Section 7, Student Support Programs in the NTU Student Handbook. If you are in need of accommodation, please contact Virginia Edgewater uh, at vedgewater at navajotech.edu. Uh, her phone numbers are 505-786-4138 and 505-387-7396. Why two phone numbers? Because the old one? Exactly. The first one is the old phone number. The second one is the new phone number. And I've discovered they got part way through the school putting in new phones and then they seem to have stopped. What's up with that? I don't know. All right. <laughs> Five pages of excitement. Uh, are there any uh, questions on any parts of these? Remember that this is um, a legal document between you and the school, okay? Um, and I have uh, before had a student uh, who uh, uh, said, wait a minute, this is the uh, syllabus you gave us and you're not sticking to it. 
and made me uh, uh, change things. Um, I don't actually expect to have a problem one way or the other, but you do need to know your legal rights. All right. So, no questions? No questions on that one. Uh, which, uh, uh, now you may have noticed, oh, well, we have three participants. Okay, so the, we have two people that are online. They've been very quiet so far. Um, you'll no, you may have noticed I promised uh, uh, that we would do chapter one, which, as you may have already guessed, is the introductory chapter. Um, uh, I'm wondering if I should actually do it because now we um, have a different book and I'm hoping it, that the slideshow for the old book works pretty well for the new one. All right, but All right, so the sixth edition book has a picture of a bunch of people sailing, um, which every chapter in the slideshow also has. Um, all right. Uh, another exciting feature is that they show this little uh, network node diagram uh, at the beginning of every chapter to see where you are. And we are here at the introduction. And boy, do I feel stupid because I forgot to start Zoom recording when I started this. Good thing I have the camera back up. All right, so what is a project? Okay, so it is a complex, non-routine, one-time effort limited by time, budget, resources, and performance specifications designed to meet customer needs. All right, so that means that we can break down what a project is into its major characteristics. First of all, we have an established objectives, right? We're not just starting out and fooling around and hoping that we get somewhere, but we don't know where. We're looking for some specific thing that we're going to do. Uh, we're going to create a medical clinic, or we're going to start a new business, or we're going to um, get a pipeline for water out to people that don't have water now. It has a defined lifespan with a beginning and an end. Okay, so in other words, that's that uh, time-limited factor, right? We know we have to finish this project in three months or three years. Hopefully not three decades, though. Uh, those projects can be very hard. Requires across the organizational across the organization participation. Um, we, uh, 
assume that this is a project that is being embraced by a larger um, uh, organization, right? It's not just us. Now that could be something like uh, you organize the family and say, hey, today we are cleaning out the garage and everybody's going to help. Or that could be something like, we are going to build a nuclear pl power plant and our entire organization is going to get behind that. Okay, involves something never done, been done before. Well, that's not necessarily true of every project. Sometimes we do projects where we've done something similar or maybe even something exactly the same uh, before. Has specific time, cost, and performance requirements. Right? The Navajo Nation decides they're going to lay a water line so that people can have running water. They say, this is how much time you have, this is how much money you have to do it, and this is what it has to be able to do uh, uh, when you uh, are done. Right? It can't be that the person at the end of the pipeline only gets little drops of water out. All right, so what is the difference between a program and a project? Okay, well, a program is a series of coordinated, related, multiple projects that continue over an extended time and are intended to achieve a goal. Okay, so we might say, you know what, we're going to get running water to everybody on the Navajo Nation. Well, that's actually going to break down into a bunch of sub-projects, right? There will be a sub-project to get water out to people around Shiprock. And we might even break that down further and say, all right, we'll have two projects. One will be for the people east of Shiprock want to be for the people west of Shiprock, uh, right? And then we would just keep going and say, all right, we're going to have projects to get the water to the people around Kayenta and around Tuba City and so on and so on. So it's really a, a higher level of projects that to achieve a, a goal. Uh, so a project might be completing this course in project management. Uh, a program would be completion of all the courses required for being a business major um, here at NTU. All right, so what is the difference between just routine work and projects? Well, routine work implies repetitive, that we do it a lot. So that's things like taking notes here in class, uh, entering sales receipts into the accounting ledger, responding to a supply chain request, practicing scales on the piano, uh, manufacturing an Apple iPod. Do they even make iPods anymore? I don't think so. Uh, attaching tags on a manufacturer product. Where a project would be like writing a term paper, right? Uh, you will have a class project which is going to be a one-time deal for this class. Setting up a sales kiosk for a professional accounting meeting. Developing a supply chain information system. 
uh, writing a new piano piece. Uh, designing an iPod. I'm not going to give all the specs there. Oh, bloody hell. Like I said, are there even iPods anymore? I don't think so. Uh, and uh, wire tagging projects for GE and Walmart. Uh, so, right, so projects aren't routine work. Uh, there may be some routine work inside of them. Uh, for example, depending on how big your project is, there may be an awful lot of paperwork involved uh, with it that is just routine. You got to keep track of people's time. You got to keep track of the accounting side and make sure that you're not uh, running over your cost. Uh, all right, so inside a project, we have the project life cycle. And it comes in two, uh, uh, not two, four parts. Four, yes, four. I swear it's four. <laughs> uh, and that's going to play out over time. Those four parts overlap uh, a bit. Right, so we illustrate, we illustrate with this diagram where there is a level of effort on the y-axis and time going from start to finish on the x-axis. So the very first part is we have to define what the project is. Right? We can't say something vague like, oh, we want to help the Navajo Nation. Well, how are we going to help? What are we going to do that is going to make the Navajo Nation a better place? Right? We have to define that. Are we going to bring water to people? Are we going to bring electricity to people? Are we going to vaccinate children? What are we going to do? That has to be defined. So that means we have to have goals that we're going to meet. Right? We have to have specifications. Okay? We can't just say we're going to bring electricity to people and give everyone a 9-volt battery and call it a day. <coughs> it's really hard to talk for a long time wearing a mask. Yes. What are the tasks that are going to have to be achieved within the project. And whose responsibility are those tasks going to be? Okay, so all of these things have to be done at the very beginning. Then our second part, which begins actually kicking in at the same time, is the planning of the project. One of my favorite uh, historic figures is President Eisenhower. And he always said, uh, the plan is nothing, but planning is everything. So, when we plan, we have to make schedules, right? What happens when? We have to make budgets, and those budgets are going to be linked to the schedules, right? How much money are we going to spend? When are we going to spend it? We have to lay out what resources do we need for our project. That's also going to have to be linked with budgets and schedules. What are the risks 
that we might have when we do our project. And who is going to be on our team to do this? Right? That links back to who has responsibility for what? Okay, so planning, you'll notice though, planning doesn't just get to a point and then drops off. It keeps going for a long time. We're always going to encounter difficulties that cause us to have to rethink our plan, right? So it's not something, oh, we just quickly write something on an envelope and we're done planning. All right, then there's executing, actually doing the project. And that goes, uh, it starts at a very low level at the very beginning, and obviously keeps going until the end. So when we're executing, we're gonna have to write status reports, right? Uh, if we're doing, uh, project for the Navajo Nation government, they're not just going to say, all right, here's a million and a half dollars, go do something, don't worry, just come to us when you're done. Oh, hell no. They're going to want to know probably every a week or every month what is going on. What about changes? We may be going along and discover that what we thought we could do, we actually can't do. And that we, act, uh, that we need to uh, make some changes in our plan while we're executing. What about quality? Are we going to do a good job, or are we just going to kind of slapdash everything together and call it a day? And we have to forecast what is going to happen. Oh. Broken the mask already. How often we've seen this? Um, I've done this before, so I know. Well, I'm very impressed that she's already fixing it. Okay, so we have to forecast what is going to happen. All right, so finally we're getting close to the end of the project, and we have to close out the project, right? We can't dig, uh, dig put in our water pipeline, and then just walk away, leave everything there, shovels and backhoes rusting in the sun. Right? We have to possibly train the customer. We have to transfer the documents about the project to somebody who is going to be maintaining that and maintaining those documents. We have to release the resources we give the equipment back to the people that we borrowed it from or were renting it from. We have to evaluate our project. Did we do a good job on our project? Or it's just barely acceptable and next time we'll do better? That goes into lessons learned. Right? So, all four of these go into um, uh, go into making our project, right? And you can see they overlap uh, uh, in in various ways, right? It's not that we define and then that's over and we plan, then that's over and we execute. And that's over, and then we close. Well, I guess it could come out that way, but in, in my experience, they always end up overlapping. So even if it's successful, it still stays the same, versus it's not 
so successful and it still stays the same? Like, we plan to build water for all of the Navajos on the reservation and halfway through it we run into a problem where we can't initially do what we planned. So does that life cycle stay the same as it is, like how it's awarded right there? Or does it change? Like the we don't meet our the goals. life cycle will still be what we do. But let's say we, uh, let's use your example. We have a big problem. Oh, oh okay. So the end we think is going to be here, but we have, may have to go back and say, you know what? Can we move the end over here? Because we've got this really big problem that wasn't anticipated, and uh, we're not going to be able to finish on time. Now, of course, that is kind of embarrassing in project management circles, but it happens. Okay, so in project management, obviously we're going to have challenges. The project manager manages our temporary non-repetitive activities and usually acts independent of the formal organization. Um, so the project manager and really I would expect everybody in this class to at some time or another be a project manager is going to get the resources for the project uh, right one way or another now it might be such a huge project that the, what the project manager is actually doing is saying, okay, me Cheryl, I need you to contact all the construction companies in the area and see where we can get the best price on renting some digging equipment. And Judith, I need you to, uh, to go and see where we can hire uh, manpower uh, uh, for this project while I'm off doing some other thing. Okay, the project manager interfaces with the customer. Okay, and sometimes that is just a giant pain in the tuckus, uh, as you can imagine. They're going to provide the direction, the coordination, and integration of the project team, right? So we hit that big problem, and the project manager is going to be the one that says, okay, uh, you've all given me your ideas of how, what we should do. This is what we're going to do. The project manager is also responsible for the performance and the success of the project. So your head's going to be on the chopping block. So, the project manager has to induce the right people at the right time to address the right issues and make the right decisions. Boy, that's a lot of responsibility. All right, so why do we do projects? What are some of the things that make us do projects? Well, one is compression of the product life cycle. It used to be that the American car companies would design 10 years worth of cars at once. Well, now you could never do that uh, because 
the uh, the Japanese came in and said, you know what, 10 years, forget that. We're designing a new car today. We'll have it being produced by our factories in nine months. Uh, we'll sell it for a couple of years, and then we'll have something else ready to go. Another thing is the explosion of knowledge, right? Um, uh, back in the day, uh, depending on what day we're talking about, scientific and technical knowledge was not that extensive. And so it took a while to, uh, to do things, uh, to build a railroad, to build a ship, etc. Well, now we know better and better and better ways to do things all the time. We have our triple bottom line where we're worried about the planet, the people, and profit. Now, it used to be that profit was the only thing that the project manager had to deliver. But that was kind of short-sighted. Now, we worry about uh, the planet uh, trying to make things and do things in a way where we won't harm the planet. We worry about the people, the people that are going to use our product and the people who are working with us. Uh, well, I say product, it could, uh, project, right? What we make may or may not be a product as such. If we're building a dam, I guess you could think of that as a product, but, uh, uh, but that's more of a, a project. Corporate downsizing. Sizing. Companies cannot afford to support the same number of people that they used to. Uh, it, I remember from when I was a mere slip of a boy, although my mere sliphood is long gone now, <laughs> um, how wasteful uh, companies, corporations, organizations in general work. Now, more and more, we're looking at how can we replace the effort of many people with the effort of a few people. We also have, at the same time, an increased customer focus. When the American car companies were designing 10 years worth of cars at once, they weren't saying, hmm, what is the customer going to want? They were saying, they'll buy whatever damn thing we shove down their throats. Well, now you have to keep your eye on the customer. You have to deliver what they want or they'll go somewhere else. Also, small projects can represent a big problem. Uh, a project might be something like, uh, we have a, a power de generation plant and it's polluting too much. Well, even though we might be measuring the uh, how much too much in micrograms, we still have to do something to stop that or the EPA will shut down the plant. Uh, and of course, if they shut down the, the plant, then the company goes bankrupt, potentially uh, everybody loses their job, etc. So, now we think of governing our projects in an integrated way. So, 
in most companies, they have an integration of the project management so that senior management can see what are all the project management activities going on. How are the organizational resources being used? What is the risk of each project and what is the risk of all of our projects put together? So that we can see whether we're managing projects better than other people in the industry and for that matter, better than we used to. Everything we do, we should be concerned with, are we doing better now than we used to? And we want senior management to be able to talk with the project uh, managers and know back and forth what's going on. All right, so uh, the idea is we want everything to be contained as one thing. Every organization, for that matter, every group of people has a culture. Uh, an organization has a culture that will determine how well or how badly they do. Yeah, that's right? So you look at an organization like Toyota, they have a very tight culture of getting things done and solving problems. Right? Even this class has a culture. But our culture is not very well developed. Cultures need history uh, to bind them together and to make them holistic. So at the end of the semester, we, have, we may have a pretty tight culture also, right? But right now, it's kind of like, hmm, I don't know about that bald guy up there. <laughs> Right? So our organizational culture gives us an environment we work in. I'm sure you've seen companies where people work really hard and everybody is pulling together trying to make what the company does better. I'm sure you've also seen, and maybe more often, companies where People can hardly be bothered to do anything at all. Uh, the company is barely making it. Uh, uh, nobody really cares about the company they work for. I mean, am I hitting any uh, yeah. notes here? Yeah, I like the, um, the undercover boss. When the CEOs go to different, different locations, and they find that some of the employees are going just over and beyond and they care, they're there, they go out of their way to kind of um, cater to the customer. And then there you have these ones that, like you said, they don't care, they just, okay, I'm here for work, hi, how are you doing? Not really engaging or really being there for the company, just, Earning a paycheck, I guess. That is an excellent illustration. Uh, because what happens is that in some companies, the culture is such that everybody starts working hard. You know, I mean, it's like 8 o'clock, everybody's hard at it, already uh, making things happen. Uh, uh, and in, uh, in other companies, uh, and, and if you have a company like that, 
those guys that are kind of lazy, they don't really want to get their job, very often they self-select out uh, or end up getting fired uh, because, um, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like they become pariahs. You know, nobody wants to work with the guy who's not going to pull his weight. All right, so inside that organizational culture, our project management, we're going to have a bunch of projects, we assume. We're assuming a big company here and not just a little one where only one project at a time can be done. So we have a bunch of projects. Those are managed in a portfolio of maybe we have a project management office that kind of keeps the tabs on everyone, uh, right? But all these projects have different, uh, different goals to help the company. Maybe one project is out there improving the safety uh, at a certain facility. Another project is out there and they are designing and building a new facility, right? So there's a bunch of projects. All of those projects within the portfolio have to be aligned with the strategy of the company. Right? We can't just be doing projects because we think it's neato or would be fun. Well, we could be, but that's the kind of company that uh, uh, that uh, goes broke. Uh, for example, uh, y'all probably aren't old enough to remember Hughes Aviation. Hughes Aviation was started by Howard Hughes the uh, billionaire who died back in the 1970s. And uh, Hughes Aviation and a bunch of his other companies kept going after he died. But one day they had what they called Black Tuesday at Hughes Aviation. Because everybody was having fun and doing a lot of fun stuff. The problem was no strategic alignment. A lot of that fun stuff wasn't doing anything to move the ball ahead for the company. And so the company uh, just about went bankrupt and they called everybody in and they had to fire a bunch of people and Hughes Aircraft ended up being absorbed by another company. Wasn't there a movie? Didn't they make a movie of that? Of that guy you're talking about? Who was it? Howard, you, yeah, there are uh, movies. Actually, one of the companies he owned was a movie company. Yeah, I think I, I think I, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking. I think I seen a movie about that guy. I would not how, be surprised. And, and how he said, like you said, he there was a, a culture that they just went all crazy and they eventually went broke. Well, Howard Hughes did kind of go crazy uh, a little bit at the end of his life. Uh, but just one illustration along the way. All right, so when our projects aren't aligned with our organization's strategy, then we have projects that aren't supporting the overall strategic plan and the goals of the organization. Uh, we have uh, management decisions creating internal imbalances and conflicts and all kinds of confusion and that can lead to dissatisfied customers which we definitely don't want. We can have a failure to prioritize projects uh, uh, that results in the waste of resources on non-value-added activities and projects, right? So kind of the Hughes aircraft thing of, oh, we're doing this because we think it's really neat, but it won't necessarily make the company any money or work with all the other things that we want to do.
All right, so when we talk about portfolio management, that means that we're going to look at what projects should we select. Is this a project that is in line with our strategic plan and is going to uh, make the company better? Or is it a project that's really kind of a waste of time? We want to monitor our resource levels and skills. Now you'll notice it says aggregate which means all of our resources and skills. We want to encourage best practices. We always want to do things the best way we know how. And sometimes that's hard because people don't like to change how they do things, even if they do things in a really dumbass way. Uh, we want to balance the projects in the portfolio so we have a risk level that's good for the organization, right? Uh, when we talk about risk level, in every project we're going to have risks. Even if, uh, uh, well, look at it this way. Getting out of bed in the morning entails some risks. Uh, and the risks that y'all face getting out of bed in the morning are probably going to be different than the ones that I face. For example, one of the big risks in my life in getting out of bed in the morning is that I'll step on a cat or trip over a cat and injure either the cat or myself. Right? For other people, the risk could be much higher. Uh, a friend of mine told me about uh, guarding trees in Oregon, and his risk in getting out of bed was that he would fall hundreds of feet to the ground. I hate when that happens. <laughs> uh, right? But risks can be all kinds of things. A risk could be something so minor, we don't really think about it. For example, when you went out this morning, you weren't looking up at the sky saying, boy, I hope a meteorite doesn't hit me. Um, as far as we can tell, only one person has ever been hit by a meteorite. Um, now, several more have been hit by space jump coming back to Earth, but that's another story, right? Yeah. We don't look up at the sky expecting meteorites to fall on us, uh, right? But other risks can be much higher, right? When you get in your car and you drive somewhere, that's one of the riskiest activities that you indulge in. All right, so there are all kinds of risks that go along with doing projects or everyday living. And when we manage a project, we try and figure out what are those risks for this project and how can we make them as small as possible. Uh, improve communication among all s stakeholders. One problem in so many organizations is the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. Uh, I'm sure there's no university near here that y'all can think of where that's the case. No university in Chrome. You say, wait a minute, they're not telling me everything. Um, okay, so uh, we want good communication back and forth so everyone knows what's going on. Uh, we want to have a, a large organization perspective. 
right? Too often, somebody only thinks of their little part of the organization. That's all they think about ever. They don't think about how their part affects the other parts or how the other parts affect their part, right? So we want to make sure that we're thinking in terms of, um, of what is the whole organization doing and how do we fit into it. And we want to improve the management of projects over time. We always want to improve. All right, so this is, uh, you'll be glad to know, the second to last slide. Um, one of the things that we think about in human factors, which is one of the fields that uh, I study a lot, is what is our socio-technical uh, or, uh, organizational dimensions. Uh, so on the social cult cultural side, we think about leadership, about problem solving, about teamwork, about negotiation, about politics, and about our customers' expectations. On the technical side, we think, <coughs> pardon me, we think about the scope of our project, the work breakdown structure, the schedules for our project, our resource allocation, our baseline budgets, and status reports, right? So, Everything is integrated, right? We, the technical stuff can't happen without people to make it happen. Well, people form societies, they form cultures, right? For example, I said that this class is, has a culture. Well, think about the culture of your family, right? Your family has certain ways of doing things that are very comfortable and, nat and natural to you, but somebody coming in from the outside might be going, hmm, how did these guys decide they should do this? Uh, I grew up in a family where my father was an atheist and my mother was an agnostic. The first time I had dinner at a friend's house where they said grace, I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> right? But to others, that's just how their culture works. Yes, ma'am? What's an agnostic? Or agnostic means you don't really know if there's a God or not. Oh. So what did you do? Uh, I pretended I knew uh, I, I uh, knew what to do and just did what they did. Uh, I didn't have to say grace, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Right, I was only like five or six at the time. Oh yeah. All right, so uh, these are the key terms that they've uh, got. These will be written at the back of your, uh, the chapter in your book uh, as well. Are there any other questions? No. no. All right, well, I'll let you go three minutes early then. Yay, three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the homework. I have a question. Uh, sure, what's that? What's the homework? Ah, an excellent question. All right, so let me... And when 
is homework due? One week homework after. will be due in one week. Homework number one. Uh, write about a project that you have managed. Right? This doesn't have to be something huge, but the time you got your family uh, and you rearranged the house, or uh, or everybody got together and uh, built a little shed. Okay, apparently Judith has been there and done that. <laughs> and still in the process. I particularly, particularly, if you uh, were managing the project, All right, so write about a page on, on something that you've done. Um, and write, am, I, am I sharing that? No. Uh, there you go. Um, right, and that will be due on uh, the 18th. Okay, uh, let me... Um, would this be in Moodle? Would this be in Moodle, what do you mean? Are you turning in all our homework in Moodle or just email it here? Email. If you attend class by uh, uh, by Zoom, then I think it's going to have to be in Moodle. I would prefer that you hand me actually something uh, that you've uh, you've printed out. Um, For um, our portfolio. Uh, well, exactly. Look in Moodle. If you turn in the homework that way, then I have to print it out, uh, 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 grade it, I have to give feedback on Moodle. Oh my God, uh, <laughs> it multiplies work tremendously. Uh, so uh, I would prefer, if at all possible, that um, you print out the homework and, uh, and give it to me. Um, now, some people may not be able to do this, uh, particularly because they're threatening to dump a bunch of people into this class from Chin Lee. Um, and I just can't picture these guys driving two and a half hours here to hand over their homework. Uh, right, but a little kindness goes a long way. Yeah. So if you're not here in the classroom particularly, do you have an inbox or somewhere we can place the homework? Uh, well, as I said, uh, that's my office there. Uh, if I'm not there, put it on my chair. Um, and uh, uh, that way I'll see it and, uh, uh, and I'll uh, uh, be well, able to... Uh, if I ever do that, then I'll just go ahead and follow up with an email saying I dropped off my homework. I put it on your chair or your desk or something. Okay, well, there's, there's no windows to the outside world, so very little of my homework is ever blown away. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay, well, if there are no questions, 
and I'm, I'm waiting for our guys, uh, I'm waiting for our guys uh, uh, to uh, send me a chat message or something to show me they're alive. They're probably burning their dinner. <laughs> Could be. Uh, all right. Well, thank you very much, and I'm going to terminate the meeting. Uh, and when the fields are white with daisies, call it Thursday afternoon. We'll meet again. foil my foe. No minstrel he, despite bravado. He is the son of your only be In vain you interrupt with this tornado. He is the only son of your